Welcome back to Educator.com. This is a lesson on smell, taste, and touch. When we look at nasal anatomy, uh, this main structure of the body that's involved with smelling, of course, there's the nose. That's the most obvious part. It's made up of skin, cartilage, uh, a little bit of fat in there. Um, you also have some bones, but this part here, right, that I'm touching, is cartilage. It's soft bone. The only bony part of the nose itself is up here at the bridge. These are the two nasal bones. has a lot to do with the uh, little arch, the bridge of your nose. Uh, if you do break your nose, you tend to break this part up here, the nasal bones. Uh, a, a deep enough kind of trauma could definitely fracture parts of the maxillae or even deeper, the ethmoid bone, which is found straight through, and it's making up most of the nasal conchae, those weaving passageways deep within the nose. So mostly cartilage, that's what's making up the majority of this structure. The nasal cavity itself, of course, there's two nostrils that lead into uh, the nasal conchae. Uh, within those nostrils, you're going to have hair and mucus. Uh, you don't see the hair in this particular drawing, but we know it's there. Some people have more than others. Some people trim them. Uh, but the hair serves a purpose. Similar to the ear canal, the hair is trapping dirt, uh, particles from going in deeper. Uh, it, it's minimizing the chances that you're going to get some kind of infection in the upper respiratory tract. Uh, the mucus, of course, is constantly being produced uh, in the nasal conchae, even when you're not sick. Um, that mucus serves numerous purposes. Uh, it actually warms uh, the air that you're uh, inhaling. It, it's going to catch uh, a lot of the stuff that you are inhaling, uh, those microorganisms, uh, bacteria, viruses, etc., that you don't notice, but they're there. And yeah, when you're more sick, uh, you're, you're going to actually produce uh, additional uh, mucus. Um, but the mucus serves a purpose, and even when we're not sneezing it out, um, you're producing it, and you actually tend to swallow it, because uh, the nasal cavity does connect to uh, the pharynx, the throat, and every time you swallow, ah, there's going to be a little bit of that nasal mucus that's going to drift back uh, down your esophagus. And I know that sounds disgusting, but it's, it's part of the human body. The conchae are those weaving little caverns uh, named after the fact that they are kind of spirally and twisty and turny like a conch shell. Uh, but the nasal conchae is formed mostly by that ethmoid bone that we discussed in the uh, skeletal lessons. And on top of those weaving caverns of the ethmoid bone, you're going to have those mucous membranes producing the nasal mucus. The cribiform plate is where we focus on for uh, all the action that's going on with your sense of smell. If you remember uh, the ethmoid bone being kind of like an E on its side, and the, these parts of the E are those twisty, turny, conche parts, this was that perpendicular plate that goes vertical. If you go up to the top, the uh, superior portion of the perpendicular plate, there's another part called the cribiform plate. And that superior, almost perpendicular portion uh, on, on top of that perpendicular plate contains what's called the olfactory epithelium. So the olfactory epithelium is where you have those layers of cells that actually receive those odor molecules and send the signals up to your brain. Olfaction is that technical physiological term for the sense of smell. Um, olfactory receptor cells is a common term. It's not old factory, like, like an old rundown building where they make things, uh, olfaction um, comes presumably from Latin, and it has to do with your sense of smell. So this is the only sense in the human body where the receptor cells, the olfactory receptor cells, are directly adjacent to the outer environment. If you think about the other senses, uh, whether it's touch, uh, whether it's hearing, the receptor cells involved in receiving the signaling are just much deeper. Think about uh, the ear. The, the conch, or sorry, the uh, cochlea, rather, uh, that actually has those little hair cells sensitive to the vibrations coming in your ear are really deep inside your head uh, compared with the outer structure of the ear. Not so with the nose. When those odorant molecules go up into your nostrils, they come into contact with mucus where the hairs, the little cilia, of these particular cells are right there. Now you might think, oh, that's great. Uh, it's, it's the closest receptor cells to the outer environment. The problem with that is they can get damaged a lot easier uh, than the neurons of your skin, uh, than the neurons involved with taste, than the neurons involved with hearing. So they actually get regenerated uh, more often than those other cells can. Um, so that's the price you pay for them being so close to the outer environment. 
Olfactory epithelium is that epithelial layer that is involved with actually smelling. Uh, olfactory receptor cells are the main cells that are doing the action. I'm going to highlight them in yellow. So here they are. And they have little hairs that extend out. And I'm drawing them kind of spread out like this because this increases their chances of actually getting an odorant molecule touching them. Uh, having them all spread out, just like, like little roots in the ground. Uh, in this mucus layer, having all these little hairs spread out is just going to increase the chances of reception. Basal cells are those little cells in this region that are actually functioning as like a stem cell. So as these olfactory receptor cells get damaged, basal cells can go through mitosis, and as those cells mature, they take the place of damaged or old olfactory cells. Olfactory glands, which aren't depicted very well in this particular picture, are just glands that produce the mucus. So that mucus layer that's right in here that these uh, cilia are actually um, embedded in uh, that's where the mucus comes from. Um, you know, different, a little bit different than the glands within the skin. Uh, they're producing mucus that's located in the nasal conche. And, um, yeah. The olfactory system can distinguish 2,000 to 4,000 different chemical stimuli. So as those odorant molecules come up into this passageway and hit the little cilia, it's just like action potentials from previous lessons. As the cilia get hit, those open up channels where the sodium potassium moves and it activates these cells just like another neuron. These are modified to react to odors. Now, if you sat down and, and drew a, or wrote out a list of all the different odors that you remember smelling, like, oh, you know, orange, uh, lavender, etc. It'd be hard to come up with a list of 2,000 to 4,000. Um, we don't always consciously uh, remember uh, that we, we can smell these different things, but in terms of how the brain reacts to different stimuli, uh, we found that there are thousands of different chemicals uh, that affect uh, your olfactory receptor cells just a little bit differently.